Once in a Fortnite, a podcast by fans for fans. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Once in a Fortnite. I am your host, Nick, a.k.a. The Wyler. Here with me today is... Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm all alone. What am I going to do with myself? Oh, man. So, for any of those of you who don't know or who didn't see our update, Kevin is going to be out for the next couple of weeks, so that means it's going to be just me. I'm going to try to get some other people in here, but for now, I want to keep that show going, keep it going for you guys. So, first off, um, you some of you may not know that we are going to be switching to weekly podcasts. So, basically, what this means... So basically, what this means is that you will have your normal once in a fortnight, and that will be every other week. And then on every other week, you will have inside Fortnite, which will be me talking with somebody in the community, whether it be a streamer, somebody who makes YouTube videos, possibly even developers further down the road. So get excited about that. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of badass. I'm just excited to officially go week weekly for you guys and keep bringing you guys great content. So first off, a little grinding. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get all the likes we wanted on Facebook, Twitter, or Discord. Um, so we won't be doing the two giveaways, but let's try again for February. If we get to 100 likes on Twitter at once fortnight, or if you have a a hundred of you go on to our Discord, which are always in the descriptions. So look for that. We'll give a two ten dollar giveaway. That's a thousand V bucks. So make sure to look out for that. Also, we're still trying to push our Twitch, which if we get to a fifty people watching at a time on one of our stri uh, streams, then we'll do a giveaway for that as well. Make sure and join our streams on Mondays. Wednesdays and Fridays. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays will be streaming from about 8 to 10, and that's Mountain, St Mountain Standard Time, so look out for that. I would like to give a very, very sincere thank you to our very first two Patreons, Kyle and Tifos. Thank you so much for being, you know, hopefully the first two out of many. Um, I, I am aiming for this to be a very independent uh, media. I don't want to have to worry about advertisements. I don't want to have to worry about sponsors or anything like that. I just want it to be independent. And so you two are the first step, hopefully, to making that a reality. So thank you so much. And I am proud to bring you weekly podcast as, as a thank you to all you guys. Um, our PS4 community is now 39 people strong, so if you haven't already got onto our PS4 community, you can go on to there. Um, if you're on PC or Xbox One, please join our Discord, and you can still help find um, you know, parties and stuff like that if you want to party up with other people in the Once in a Fortnite um, podcast community. And so hopefully... Um, everybody who listens to this knows that I want a really good community of people who are very helpful, not too many trolls, anything like that. And so hopefully if you get on our discord, we can, we can find people of like-minded gamerness and play together. So go on to our discord or onto our PlayStation 4 community at once in a fortnight. And lastly, the next episode, which will technically be the first inside Fortnite, will be landing on Valentine's Day. So I thought it would be really nice to have my wife on. So not only can we get a woman's perspective, but it will kind of fit the overall Valentine's Day-ness. And so Valentine's Day. Great. All right. So that's another bogus BS. Let's get to our first segment. I got 99 problems and a husk ain't one. All right, guys. So, man, we need to talk. We, we, we need to talk. I don't know about you guys, but I think we can all agree that there is one particular phrase that I'm getting sick and tired of hearing. And that is three words. We are aware. 
Oh, good. I'm so glad. Now, there's going to be plenty of, of you guys out there, and I'm sort of one of them, but I'm trying to speak for everybody. But there's definitely going to be some of you out there that say, hey, this is a free-to-play game. This is a early access game, yada, yada, yada. And that that's totally cool. I understand that. But unfortunately, it's just getting to the point where it's just a little ridiculous. kind of seems like no matter what happens, the next thing that they try to fix also kind of break stuff and hey that's video gaming that's that's just what happens all the time right well i don't know i guess i guess it's just the pr-ness of the whole thing that i i just don't like you know why do they always have to say we are aware you know and i think if they just changed up their messaging it wouldn't come across as i am a robot we are aware that you are having the problems on our game I mean, there's tons of other words you can use than aware. We are attentive. We are cognizant. We are conscious. We are informed. We are mindful. We are receptive. We are wise. We are appraised, enlightened, go-go, groovy, grounded. Yes, I am looking at thesaurus.com, but that's not the point. The point is that always having to hear the same phrase makes it sound like it's just a copy and paste they already have a prearranged message and they're just trying to get it out as quickly as possible which i get it copying pasting it was made for a reason right but i guess i just it's so informal it doesn't feel like they're actually talking to us, the community. It sounds like they're talking to investors. Like, I'm sorry, people who are giving us money, who are funding Epic, but eh, ugh, that's just me. I want to know your guys' opinion. Let me know. Are you also kind of getting sick of this rigmarole that happens to be going on? You know, I, I want to be as understanding as possible as the servers and everything. And most of the time I am, and I usually find ways around it. Like for instance, when their party system was down, me and my wife would just uh, click on the same mission at the same time. And then we would usually get together in a party. But if it didn't work, then we would both back out and we try it again. Uh, when we did this, we did two or three rounds, I want to say. And we only had to retry like once because I think enough people were probably not playing that it really wasn't that big a deal. But still, I mean, I digress. Um, it's just it's something that's getting a little getting a little tiresome, you know, and I think just switching up the thing, the way you do things and the way you talk to us would really help us feel like maybe you're not just talking to us because that's what you're supposed to do but rather that you're talking to us because that's what you want to do because i know i think i know and many other people know that you are talking to us because you want to but there's plenty of people out there that are just sick of it and that's i just feel like i need i need to speak for people I need to speak for people let let you know that it's it it's getting to us and just Talk to us differently. Talk to us like human beings. Don't talk to us like you, you're you're worried about getting sued because that's what it sounds like. All right, enough of that. Now on to something a little bit happier. Uh, we're going to be starting a brand new segment that I like to call Getting It Good. And basically, this, this came about because I've had well, well over hundreds of of matches in solo and in squads and i think maybe even in duos to be honest i've had hundreds of matches and i just can't seem to get any better and i'm not really sure what exactly i'm doing wrong and i'm not really sure you know what's going on so i put out a tweet and i'm like hey i'm not sure what i'm doing wrong somebody go look at my live streams and maybe give me some pointers and stuff like that. So that was the birth, so to speak, of the getting it good um, segment. So if you can, write in to our uh, Once in a Fortnite at Threat X3 Productions on our Once in a Fortnite tab. It'll bring you right to our discussions. And you can go to, um, actually, 
I will have a, a, its very own segment, Getting It Good, um, or you can go to Weather Safety Tips. But Weather Safety Tips, I guess, would be a little bit more towards the PPE side of stuff. First off, I want to thank a couple of people that I played with. I got Ricky. Um, I played with him. We actually did really good. Uh, it kind of bumped my confidence up a little bit. Um, but me and Ricky started playing, and I, I, I saw him on Twitter. And he does really good at liking most of the stuff I put out. And uh, I'll be honest, a lot of my Twitter is very um, kind of trolly. Somebody will put something out and I'll just put out like a silly gif or whatever to kind of like troll them. Like there was this one time um, Battle Royale, uh, which I don't think is the official Battle Royale um, Twitter. It's rather something else. They're like, good job on the servers or whatever. So I put a gif of Stephen Colbert sucking on a lollipop and that was me basically saying, oh yeah, good job sucking up to him. <laughs> and so, but anyways, the point is he liked a couple of my stuff. I happened to look at his profile pic because I'm a stalker. And I, he had some, um, like a uniform on, like a sports uniform on. I'm like, okay. So then I click on his, um, profile because I'm a stalker. And I see that there's like pictures of like soccer or something. I'm like, oh, what's, what's, what's that about? Okay. So I, I was too curious. I couldn't. So I messaged him. I'm like, hey, um, thank you for supporting the channel and everything. Thank you for liking all my stuff. I couldn't help but to notice that, you know, you have like something on. And I, I basically asked him like, hey, are you like a, a pro or something? A pro soccer player or something like that? So he gets back to me and I'm like, yeah, he got me back to me. It. It turns out that Ricky is a pro league rugby player from Europe. And so this was really cool for me because not only because I have like a pro actual athlete who's interested in hopefully something that will be becoming um, a, you know, esport very, very soon. But just the fact that it's also in Europe, it's completely across the thing. And that got me to thinking I've met a couple of people now that aren't even in America like I am. So we got Ricky. We got um, Strike, which is a, a German guy that I actually talked to on one of my streams. I, I think he's also a listener. Um, then we have uh, Moto King. I apologize. I forgot your real name. That's his gamer tag. Moto King. He contacted me on one of the days and it turns out he's from Canada unless I'm getting you mixed up with somebody I'm so sorry if I'm getting you mixed up with somebody but he's from Canada so it's like I have so many people from all different kind of nationalities or whatever so one thing I'd really like everybody to do just be to feed my curiosity I'd really like everybody who is on my Twitter to tweet at uh once fortnight and let me know where you're from uh what do you think of the show i guess if you want to do that as well but i'd really like to know like what my demographic is and everything i'd really like to know you know where you're from or whatever then also if you're liking uh once fortnight or you're following us for the first time do the same thing tweet us let us know you know pull, pull your car over if you're listening to us pull your car over go to twitter go to once fortnight like us and then tell me where you're from what do you do you know, let, let me get to know you guys. I'd really like to know that. Cause that was just a really cool story that I got Ricky. He's, he's this rugby player. And I'm like, Oh, well that's kind of cool. And then I got somebody from Canada, somebody from Germany. It's like, you know, I'm just, I'm just the dumb old American. And I never thought to myself that when I, when I put out this podcast that I would be reaching out to people around the world. I was just like, you know, they'll hear my accent and they won't even care. They'll just be like, oh, it's just another damn American. Well, f this guy. But yeah, I would just like to really know who I'm talking to and who's listening in and everything. So thank you so much for playing with me, Ricky. Also, thank you for joining my squad. I got a couple of cool guys. Uh, the Real Jazz, V Rush Skills, and Moto King, which I told you about before. We got in a we got in a squad together. We got uh, into Tilted Towers, which I almost never do. I hate doing that. But we got into Tilted Tower. We started messing around there. I actually did pretty good for once, you know. So I mean, maybe it's just about getting with a with a good crew and everything and rolling it that way. But it was really cool because we got up on top of a building. 
and then somebody was building up towards us. I want to say it was either I want to say it was either the real jazz or rush skills had a minigun, which it was like the first day that the minigun had come out. And so he's just like shooting across to them. And I think they also had a minigun. So they were shooting across to us. Um, I think we ended up getting killed because they came up through the ceiling of the building we were at. And so that kind of sucked. But it was really fun. So thank you guys so much for going in there. Um, um, speaking of the Nick Get Good, we do have um, somebody who wrote in. So Mr. Fries 2 That's right, Fries 2 because one was just not enough. So uh, FYI, I realized after I wrote this how long it turned out to be. Please, what does TLDR mean? Tread lightly, Dr. Rando. I will tread lightly, Dr. Rando. Thank you very much, Fryzo2. I mentioned this on the community page a little bit, but I think a discussion finding your style of play could help a lot of new struggling players. I think some people watch these increasingly talented streamers who play a hyper-aggressive style because one, they are skilled enough to do so, and two, it's entertaining to watch. But not everyone has the fast twitch response or is comfortable with building enough or just our natural aggressive uh, can get caught trying to... I'm sorry, I'm getting mixed up here. Try to play a way that isn't best for them. I would encourage people to try to play in different ways to find what their niche in this game works for them. Uh, maybe you drop on the edge of the map and you stay on the edge of the circle until the end. Maybe you land at Tilted and play the hyper-aggressive style. Maybe land in a moderately popular area, build strong bases. Uh, maybe be that guy that assaults the base and takes it as their own. Uh, there are so many different ways to accomplish what you want and maybe playing different ways can help you discover what works best. Find people who who play both the same way as you and slightly different than you. Watch how they approach scenarios as compared to what your first instinct would be. Me personally, I play outside in the in, oh sorry, I play outside in for the first couple circles. Land in the non-popular areas and loot what I can on the outskirts. I usually encounter only a handful of people in the beginning, but as the circle shrinks, I switch to a much more active mindset, seek out uh, bases and assault and firefights to clean them up. I love to snipe and try to keep engagement at a distance because that's where my strength lies in the beginning. And then engage more and surprise attacks in the later game to compensate for less strong skills in CQC, which is close quarter combat. Uh, anyways, finding your unique style and exposing yourself to different situations with others who may not approach things the same way can only benefit you as your game evolves. So... 100% Friars 2 That is a very good point as far as Battle Royale. You really want to find your play style. Um, I'd say that uh, one of the main things he brought up is the squads. Um, finding a good squad is definitely one thing that made playing the game so much fun over the last week is I found a couple of different play people to play with. Ricky and me, we seem to be a little bit more aggressive, whereas when I was with Moto King and I hate jazz, what was it? <laughs> the real jazz, sorry. The real jazz. Um, uh, when, when I was with them, we did seem to be a little bit more uh, in sync with each other. It was really nice. And so, but the other characters were kind of more aggressive, whereas I was trying to make sure that I was always covering our six. I was always trying to keep my ears open for other threats and everything. And then I think one of the main things he brought up was the whole outside circle thing and um, trying to keep your engagements 
you know, what I always think is that when the circle starts getting even smaller and smaller, sometimes I get a little bit too aggressive. So when I try to go towards the center, I end up getting hit from like the side or from behind. And so that makes a lot of sense as far as, you know, picking your time. I think that's one thing that you can always learn. If you want to be aggressive and you want to get your kill death ratio way, way up, then I guess it makes sense. But one thing you always want to keep in mind is that you don't know what the other player has. You don't know if if they have a bunch of building material. You don't know if they have 100% shield. Um, so you want to make sure to pick your engagements accordingly. You don't want to just go in guns blazing unless you absolutely know you can take that person down. And so I think what he talked about, uh, sneak attacks, that's really key. You really got to get in there and you really gotta even if you're you're really confident in your slaying skills it'll just make it that much easier if you have the drop on them so thank you so much uh fryzo2 for writing into us and thank you for your support you're always I, you're also one of my twitter followers so thank you very much um couple new updates to the to battle royale one thing i noticed i was dropping in and all of a sudden there was a new island in uh, the loot lake. So uh, that, I didn't get a chance to land there quite yet. So, you know, I'll talk maybe a little bit about it next time. But then in Tomato Town, I don't know if it was just me, but it kind of seemed like there were a lot more cars. Um, this is very preliminary stuff. So I'm not going to be able to give you a 100% full impression. It's just something I kind of thought was a little off. Like, isn't there a lot more cars? Uh, I, of course, harvested them, them all, but it was a little weird. Uh, but then the big Big ones are since the last time we talked were the big chug um, things like the auto run and obviously the minigun so big chug is actually really cool um, I kind of use it as my secondary I don't especially if you get it and it's like one of the first things you get from a chest I don't like drinking it right away because it's like well I already have a hundred percent health so it would almost be a waste because you get 100 percent on your shield and your health. So if you already have 100% on your health, it almost seems like a waste because you're you're just you're basically just doing your shield, you know. And I think this also depends on your playstyle, but for me personally, I like to kind of keep it um and at least wait to see usually maybe 5 minutes after that first 5 or 10 minutes when the circle's getting smaller and smaller, I like to try and at least get myself some um, shields first because I would hate to get like let's say two shields or you know two small shields and a big shield I would hate to go find those and I've already used my big chug so you want to try to be a little conservative on that the auto run um I don't know I don't really I don't really use it I, I don't really find I don't have a problem pushing forward for a long period of time because that was that's been my career in battle royale i've pretty much always just been running so um i don't know um i could i could see its benefit and i could see why some people like it um i'm yeah i don't know i'm not a huge fan of it and but it's kind of cool it's just one of those um quality of life improvements you know it's not really needed necessarily but it's one of those things that if you want it it's great for you then we have the minigun. Um, I only was able to use it a couple of times, and I, I swear each time I, I didn't do that well because somebody got the drop on me. It takes just like a second and a half to wind up, so I, I never did that good. I think I might have gotten a couple of hits off to him, but I like it. Um, I, think, I think its main purpose is other than just scaring people, I think its main purpose is kind of to take down fortresses. You know, even during the trailer, they show it taking down like a, a fortress or a, a tower or whatever you want to call it. And I think that is kind of one of its main purposes other than just the sheer, oh my God, that person has a minigun. But that could work into your disadvantage because if they find out that you have a minigun, people might want to be more aggressive with you. Um, and if they close that distance and they're able to like move around quicker than you, then 
you having a minigun makes less sense, which seems to be what happened to me a couple of times is that I took a while to really get it up and going. And so then they were able to get the drop on me. And so of course they were happy because they got the minigun. So if somebody knows you have the minigun, that could just spell your detriment. Also, they're just they're not good at long distance, which is to be expected, I think. They're obviously supposed to be a, a, a very close quarters type of gun or whatever, but more reasons to why it's good for towers. The last thing I wanted to talk about in the Battle Royale mode is, you know, there's a lot of people, they're putting out, um, like, concepts and stuff like that. So, like, there was this uh, C4 concept. They're like, hey, what would you think about a C4? My response to C4 was, what about, like, a beehive bomb? So, in the PvE, if you haven't played it, there's a husk with a beehive stuck on its head, and then it can direct the bees to go directly at you and stuff like that. So, I'm like, well, hold on now. Instead of a C4, what about a C4 like beehive so it would get it would be sticky because it has honey all over it and then people could hear the buzzing so maybe that would give them a chance to like run away or something it would still kind of act like a C4 but it would just give that little bit of silliness that you would expect from some of the weapons in Fortnite plus I think it could also kind of double as like a Maltov because when you blow up it would basically create this cloud of bees and so then it would create this area of effect where people don't want to go near it and so you you, you could use that to push people in a certain direction maybe you use it to create a choke point or something like that because people don't want to go through the bees um i think it could be something really nice and it just sticks with the aesthetic of fortnite and the arcadiness of it i think so that would be really cool and then there was a couple other ones like they were like the famas and the you know single bolt action without a scope um Things like that. I think that would be kind of cool. And I think eventually they're just going to add in and anything that's in the PVE that makes sense in the Battle Royale. I think eventually they're just going to throw it in there. Then we had a couple, I want to say maybe even a month back, there was a tweet about um, different game modes. And I don't know if it was because of it, but we did have that sniper shootout. And that was one of the th one of the things people seem to be um, voting on a lot. So, you know, it seems like they are listening. So I want to give my official pitch for the Husk Invasion game mode. So this would be a battle royale game mode, but it would also incorporate some of the PVE-ness of it with the husks. So here is my official pitch for the Husk Invasion invasion so i think first off it's possible that the count would have to be cut down to accommodate all the new assets aka the husks and everything um plus it just might be nicer to not have to worry about you know hundreds of husks and hundreds of players so i think i think it could work in both ways so it would work like normal you would drop in just like a regular battle royale but now there's just a bunch of husk randomly skewed throughout the entire map uh, your pickaxe, I think, should do more damage to a husk since that's the only thing you start off with. Um, me, I think there are no more weapons on the floor and there are no more weapons in chest. Maybe chest could have a higher yield count for ammo than a normal ammo box. So maybe instead of spitting out just one or two ammo, it spits out like five different types of ammo and there's more stacked on each one. Um, maybe traps are spawned on the ground, uh, so that you, you could still pick up something. Um, I think the number one way to get weapons is to actually kill the husks. So you have to, you have to get in there, you have to get dirty. And so, especially with, uh, the pickaxe, that's why I think it should do more damage because the only way to get weapons would be from killing the husks. So you have to get out there. You have to start an engagement to do anything. You can't necessarily go and hide in a corner because if you don't do at least a little killing, you're not going to get any weapons whatsoever. So regular husks, the little guys will have the lowest chance to get any good items. So maybe they only have like a 1% chance to get a purple or orange. Uh, maybe it only has like a 5% chance to get like a blue or a green. And then it has like a 
85% chance to get a common. Um, and then the more uh, difficult husks, like the pitcher or the lobber or the husky husks, um, the bigger guys, they're going to have a higher and higher chance of getting you better loot. Um, supply drops will be replaced with smashers. Smashers should have a pretty high HP, um, probably higher than normal. You know, that's something they might have to play test over and over again to figure out what's the right amount of HP. Um, and I think that that's best for either if you do it in duos or squads, it needs to be adjusted in that you need to assume that there's so many people that are going to be engaging the smasher. The smashers will still spawn in randomly throughout the match. And when they drop, they don't drop anything lower than a purple or maybe blue. We can, we can negotiate that. Uh, husks will automatically be drawn in towards building. They do less damage to the building, I think, just so that it's not too chaotic, but they're drawn right into it. Uh, a new item would, that might be cool is like a slurp juice bomb or something like that. And basically it bursts into a cloud and husks are drawn to it. Um, other than that, pretty much everything is the same as far as the gameplay, the, you know, last man standing, last squad standing but now you just have the added threat of husks and that's also the only way you can get weapons so the only way you can do anything is by being a little bit aggressive no longer can you have a camper no longer can you have you know maybe people on the outskirts or whatever you have to get in there and it just adds that little bit i think you do have to have husks kind of spread out in like the foresty areas as well so you can still somewhat stay away from like you know greasy grove or the tilted towers but you know maybe a more concentrated uh number of them in the p points of interest so that is my official pitch for the husk invasion game mode do you guys have any of your own game modes that you think would really be good for the battle royale let me know in the comments or go to threat x3 productions and go to our once in a fortnight tab to go to our discussions all right so let's move on to our next segment the let's discuss husks Hey, I know you like Fortnite, but if you like other video games, movies, card games, Dungeons and Dragons, anything nerdy, if you like that, go to Rocky Mountain Slackers and listen to the Rocky Mountain Slacker cast on iTunes and SoundCloud. Alright, so in Let's Discuss Us, this is where we talk about the PvE side of things. Um, and so they've added a couple of things. So they got the cozy campfire ended up going from Battle Royale over to the PvE. So all allied players and defenders in a three tile area around the campfire are healed over time. So that's pretty much like normal. Um, one thing I didn't know about it because I'm stupid. One thing I didn't know is that if you place it down, it will eventually just go away with even if nobody's using it. So that kind of sucks. I think maybe that should be different for PPE, considering that in the heat of things, sometimes you don't have the chance to just plop something down. Um, we also have two new expedition types. People runs uh, a free to run expedition that lets you gather a small amount of people. Um, this is kind of cool because people are the resource that you use to do the expeditions in the first place. So, I mean, considering that it takes a while to do it, it's just really a way to do it when you don't have enough, I guess. It's just a nice option. You know, I don't necessarily need it. I think I'm up into the like the hundreds and hundreds of people because I just grinded for so long. I stopped doing expeditions for like a couple of weeks and I didn't need it. But if you're like at the end of your ropes and you just don't have enough, it's it's a good little option. You also have trap runs, uh, which will obviously give you traps. Um, and they're also balancing the changes to some of the existing expeditions. So some of them are going to cost slightly lower. And they're just basically continuing to try to make it better. And then we have various bug fixes. But then one thing they did is they removed a few llamas from the store rotation Double llamas, fiber llamas, 
six or six pack llama and a niner so that's uh the three seven and ten versions of this still exist and that's just basically make the uh rotation a little bit smaller and they rebalance the amount of starting ammunition ranged weapons when you pick them up in the world okay good for them um one thing i definitely noticed is the next thing which the wall launchers got a makeover um it's it's a big fist and I kind of like that. That was kind of cool. I, I noticed that the first time I played, and it was it was just a nice little thing. Um, they're always just adding new little things to the, to the aesthetic and just, you know, making it look a little bit more pretty, making, you know, things a little bit easier. So, yeah, it's definitely really cool. Um, one thing I definitely wanted to bring up is uh, there is a tutorial on the Fortnite forums. It's by The Urgist. And he does a really good job of going through everything and letting you know how things work. So if you get a chance, go to the forums and look for the urgest. I'll also put it in the description. So look out for that. There are a lot of people who are starting to go ahead and take that leap and go into the PVE and figure out how things work. And um, my boy Ricky, he told me he just started on the PVE side of stuff. So I thought it'd be nice to give out some advice or everything since I've been playing uh, the PVE for so long. I kind of stated some of this in one of our previous podcasts, but since it had but since it had to be taken down and we're working on getting everything back up, I thought it'd be nice to just reiterate it here. So a couple of things I think I basically this is going to be like the things I wish I would have known now when I first started going into my PVE. So first off, my number one thing is don't buy anything. Don't upgrade anything. So the main thing I mean about this is don't buy any llamas. Uh, don't upgrade any of your stuff. Or if you do, be really careful about how how much you upgrade it. Because my suggestion is you wait until you get either something with a really good roll or something purple or orange. Now, what I mean by roll is that there are going to be weapons that have certain elemental charges. So they might be fire, energy, earth, or not earth, nature, sorry, nature or uh, water. And so each one of these are going to be different because when you get into the latter stages of the game, they're going to be husks that are either fire or nature. So if you shoot them with those guns, they're not only going to do less damage, they actually get healed a little bit. And so that can make it so much harder to defeat them so you want to you want to have a good mixture of weapons so usually don't even upgrade unless it has some type of a buff you want fire you want all those different things so don't even upgrade unless it has one of those um and the reason i say don't buy anything either is because for the very first area in stonewood you kind of don't even need um traps you don't really need to do that much. Just basic weapons in Stonewood are going to do you really good. So that's my main reason for not really thinking that you need to upgrade. Towards the latter end of, of it, when you do start getting into like 19 power zones, then maybe leveling it up to like 10. But even then, I would, I would just be very cautious and maybe just go in with a group and it'll make it easier. But for me, I never feel like I needed traps in stonewood because it was easy enough where stonewood would was really just a big tutorial zone you really you just you really don't need traps a lot of times we would put up a wall and then we put up a little like a uh, waist high wall so that's the one where it's just the three on the bottom we just put up those and then most of the killing was done by us but we would put up tons and tons and tons of traps and so all we were basically doing is wasting all the material that it takes to make the traps whether it be like planks of wood or nuts and bolts which you need the nuts and bolts for your bullets so that's kind of something to keep in mind you you could be using up your bullets basically and for the first area where you don't really need the traps at all this could be a big detriment so that when you do get into the latter stages and you you do start needing the traps a little bit more, you're going to wish you didn't use them so much, which also goes back to what I was saying about upgrading them. 
because if you craft a weapon or a trap, it's going to be at the power level that you crafted it at. So even if I have, let's say, 20 wall spikes, and then afterwards I decide to level it up, level it up, level it up. Well, those 10 that I crafted are still going to be power level, you know, let's say one or two or something like that. So you want to be careful with that stuff. And obviously you can recycle them, but then you get less stuff back that you had to put in. So something to keep in mind. I think Stonewood, once again, is just a really big tutorial. So maybe just use the double wall method which is like i said you put the tall wall around the item whether it be the van or the arc just put up one wall and then a half wall just put up a half wall and then you're you should be absolutely good to go as long as you have like even just two people you should be good and sometimes even in um single player and then in single player, maybe if it's coming from two directions, you have one direction covered by traps and you cover the other direction and you just try to manage both. But honestly, it's just not something you're going to need as much. So just be very sparingly if you do use traps at all, because you don't want to be the person who absolutely covers their entire fortress in ceiling traps, wall traps, floor traps. And you have them, you have like eight of each in every direction. And then they only come from one direction and you kill them before they even touch your wall. So it's, yeah, it's definitely not something you want to do. And then I think one of the last things I, I would like to talk about today is how do you decide what missions you're going on? Um, for the first area, Stonewood, once again, you, as long as you follow the missions in like the play now, it'll put you in the missions that you need to be in. But let's say you want to do a little grinding so that you can maybe level up some stuff or something in the planker tent or something like that. I think choosing what mission you go on can be really nice because, for instance, survivor rescue is really simple. It's something that it has a timer on it, so you know how long it's going to take. Um, you could speed run, obviously, like a defender thing really fast, and that's that's fine if you wanted to speed run it. But what I actually like to do is I use my survivor missions as my resource gathering mission. So what I'll do is... I'll just gather as many resources as I can. And as long as you kind of stick to the outskirts of whatever map you're at, you're probably going to find a, a couple of campsites, which will spawn a survivor, a couple of campers, which will spawn somebody on top of it. And so you only need six survivors. And most of the time you're going to get your six survivors absolutely without even really trying. I've, I've found that as long as like it's, uh, even by myself, actually, as long as I'm just kind of passively saving rescuers, I can be resource gathering the entire match. And so what I like to do is I, I use this as my resource gathering mission. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll get a bunch of the resources and then I'll just dump them into my storage at my storm shield. And so then I can use that later for the storm shield ones because sometimes those can be the most difficult missions is to protect your storm shield. And that's the, the storm shield is the one where when you build up, it stays that way. It's the little pyramid. So having plenty of resources there there can be a really good thing because then you can do like double walls, triple walls, and you can just build it up and you can get a bunch of traps as well. So using the survivor things as your resource gathering mission can be really nice. Not only that, but if you decide to do a survive the storm after it, then you already have all the resources that you need. This will also come in handy if you have a daily mission that is save the survivors. So now let's talk about what you should be focusing on when you're first doing your skill tree. I think one of the most important things to focus on your skill tree is to focus on the constructor tree. On the constructor's tree, you get to start upgrading your walls. This is going to be very nice because once again, if especially if you have upgraded walls, you really don't have to worry about putting up traps because you should be able to take them out by yourself. So Focusing on the constructor tree of the skill tree is one of the very first things I think you should do. Plus, if you have a constructor character, it just makes that character even better. 
All right, I think that's enough for now, but please make sure to go to ThreatX3Productions.com and go to our Once in a Fortnite tab. Let me know if there's anything you guys would like me to talk about in the PvE side of stuff. Let me know if there's any questions you have or any concerns. All right, so one of the last things I wanted to talk about for the show is actually the rumor that the Fortnite might be going to Switch. Number one, I think it would be so freaking awesome. Uh, I don't have a Switch yet, but I am planning on getting it semi-soon. Hopefully at least by next Christmas. I think it would be awesome because I work as a cab driver. So when I do have downtime, it would be so cool to just get on and play video games. Let alone Fortnite. Because Fortnite, I think, would be really cool. Especially with PvE, just being able to kind of do my grinding and everything on the road um even if i had to start a new character that'd be totally fine i'd be okay with that um but i think it could be really fun however i don't know if they could necessarily handle the you know the 100 player battle royale i don't know if that's necessarily something that the switch could handle so i almost wonder if the battle royale is going to be confirmed for the switch if this does end up being true are they going to have the battle royale on there if they do are they going to have to make it go down to like 50 or or something like that i think it would be really cool i think it would fit on the switch very well but yeah i'm just not too sure about that you guys let me know what you think all right so that is it for today thank you so much for joining us in the once in a fortnight remember we're gonna have another episode next week we're going weekly people get excited hype train 2018 so next week is gonna be our valentine's day special we're gonna have my wife on we're gonna talk about why we like fortnite what she likes about it and everything so it's basically going to be just a nice little love letter eh, to Fortnite and everything so look out for that for next week um then the next week after that it's going to be just another normal once in a fortnight and then after that hopefully we're going to have some more people in here and i hope to keep bringing you guys some great content go to threat x3 productions and go to our discussions or you can go at once fortnight and get us on twitter remember if we get up to a hundred followers on twitter we're already at 23 so we're like we're almost a quarter of the way there so if we get all the way up to 100 we're gonna get two giveaways of ten dollars at the end of the month so let's get us all the way up to a hundred people on once fortnight all right that's it for this show this was nick aka the weiler you keep a weathered eye on that horizon you have a fortnight to prepare